Hi everybody. Welcome to Vegas of Foundation. My name is Manoj Swaminathan and today I am going to take you through the case processing life cycle. Let's start off by learning about the definition of case processing. The action taken on a case report following receipt of the same. In pharmacovigilance that is an adverse event and uh, which is received by the pharmaceutical company and then what are the actions that are taken on these adverse events so that is something which we will be learning so what are the primary steps in case processing case processing is everything which happens between the receipt of adverse event and the archival of the same so what are the various steps that happen between these two the first step is validity and triage so if there is an adverse event whether it is valid i'll be talking in detail in the subsequent slides so what is the validity so whether the case report is valid or invalid and then there is a process which is called triage so triage is where you book in the case report into the safety database now if the case report is valid then you start off by undertaking the data entry of the case report so uh, say you have a form an adverse event reporting form and you want to document the same in the safety database so the first step you undertake is data entry so once data entry is completed the next step is quality review so the quality reviewer will check whether the data entered is correct or if anything is missing once the quality reviewer uh, performs his or her activities the case is then pushed to the next step which is the medical review step so a medical reviewer would look at the medical uh, undertake the medical assessment and also look at whether the case makes real medical sense whether the coding is appropriate whether the case narrative is appropriate if anything needs to be changed whether the seriousness needs to be upgraded or downgraded and so on and then the most important is the causality whether there is any kind of association between the medicine and the adverse event once the medical review is complete then comes the main step of submissions so what do you mean by submissions it is the submission of the case report to the regulatory agency if not regulatory agency it can even be to a business partner once all these activities are completed the case is finally archived in the safety database so what are the various activities which are undertaken in the safety database first and foremost we need to assess the validity of the case report and for that you need to look at the four minimum criteria if the four minimum criteria is uh, are available then uh, you would then evaluate the day zero of the case report that is when the case was first received by the pharmaceutical company or the license holder after that you undertake the medical coding right so you 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 would uh, use a tools such as medra which is the medical dictionary for regulatory activities or the who dd which is the who drug dictionary or the who dd then you undertake the activity which is labeling whether the adverse event is labeled or not whether something is expected with the medicine or not for example if a patient takes uh, paracetamol and has a rash whether rash is expected with the use of paracetamol or not so if it is expected uh, if you find it in the product label then it becomes expected if you don't find it becomes unexpected so there are terms like listedness labeledness and expectedness uh, all three are different but then uh, more or less uh, the ultimate aim is the same then comes the important step of seriousness assessment so here uh, you need to check whether the adverse event is serious or not whether uh, 
it falls under any of the seriousness criteria. We'll be talking about the seriousness criteria in the subsequent slides. So once you do that, you would uh, also uh, evaluate whether what you have done is right or not. So you can use something like an IME list, important medical events list, and check whether the adverse event is listed there or not. So if it is listed, then yes, you have no choice but to consider something to be serious. Then comes the important function of activity of the challenge rechallenge. So this is uh, something you have you need to check whether the stoppage of the medicine has resulted in uh, the adverse event getting disappeared or not, or the reinitiation of the medicine. What is the impact? After that, you also need to write the narrative. So what narrative? Narrative is a summary of the entire case report starting from when the medicine was started and ultimately the outcome. So you prepare a story and that is the narrative. Then you need to undertake the causality assessment. So this is an activity which is done by the physician, the safety physician or the medical reviewer who would ascertain whether the, whether the adverse event may be related to the medicine or not. And finally, you would undertake the submissions. So submissions can be 7-day reporting, 15 days, 30 days, 60 days, or even 90 days. So that depends on the country of occurrence and the type of case report. So the initial process is triage or booking. And finally, you would also undertake the uh, quality review. So once the data entry is completed, the quality review is also undertaken. And finally, the uh, case undergoes medical review and ultimately submission. So these are the various activities which are undertaken in a safety database. Now, let us talk about the four minimum criteria and also the case report uh, validity. Uh, I know that there are other videos uh, which are there on the available on the VGSO uh, uh, website, but then I would still like to show you what uh, the four minimum criteria means, or we can rather summarize. So, when you talk about four minimum criteria, it is uh, identifiable patient, reporter, suspect drug, and adverse event. So, if any of this information is missing, then the case report becomes invalid, right? So, if uh, you know that the patient has undergone or has experienced some adverse event, but you don't know anything about the patient, whether the patient is a male, female, age, age group, nothing. You don't have any information. So in that case, you follow up and you get more information. But until then, the case report will be considered to be invalid. Okay. Then comes the important step of day zero. So what is day zero? Day zero is the date when the case report is, uh, or the valid case report is received by the marketing authorization holder or the pharmaceutical company. So that is the initial receipt date. Okay. Now, if you received a case report where you don't have the information about the patient, in that case, the case report is invalid. Then you follow up, you get information about the patient's age or say gender or some other information. So that time the case report becomes valid. And the day when you got all this information becomes the day zero. Okay, very simple. So it's all about the four minimum criteria. Okay. So day zero is important because uh, the day zero determines the submission timelines. So in the previous slide, I told you about the seven day, 15 day, 30 day, 60 day or 90 day timelines for submissions. So from what date are these calculated? So these are calculated from the day zero. Okay. Now the important step of medical coding. So this is where you would use uh, something like MEDRA, which is Medical Dictionary for Regulatory Activities and the WHO DD. Uh, so these are uh, if and always when you have the medical terms, then you need to use an uniform code, right? So that is METRA. And if you have information about the medicines, the concomitant medications, the co-suspect medications, so in that case, you would use the WHO DD. Now here, let me tell you that METRA is mandatory and WHO DD is optional. So uh, many companies don't have license for WHO DD, 
So but then that is not considered to be non-compliance. Okay. Now labeling assessment. So this is what I told about uh, the various terms like listedness, labeledness, expectedness. Uh, but then as I told you more or less the meaning is the same whether something is known to occur with the medicine or not. So this is an important activity which is performed where you gauge whether an adverse event is uh, expected with the medicine or not. So you, if uh, you recollect there is a term called as SUSAR which is suspected unexpected serious adverse reaction. So unexpected. So whether it may be related or whether it is expected with the medicine or not, okay, or whether it is in the label or not, right. So let me tell you one thing that uh, various documents can be used for labeling assessment. Uh, you can use investigators brochure in case of uh, clinical trials and in case of uh, post marketing you can use uh, product labels the SMTC or the package insert and so on. In some countries you would even have medication guides. So it is something which keeps on changing uh, and it's different for different uh, countries. Then comes the important step of seriousness assessment. So an adverse event may result in fatality. An adverse event may result in disability. There can be congenital anomaly where the mother takes the medicine and the child suffers. Yes, it can even be father. The father takes the medicine and the fetus can suffer. So that is also a possibility. Apart from this, some adverse events can also result in hospitalization. So, uh, and uh, apart from all of these, there is also an important uh, criteria, which is uh, the important medical events or the medically significant criteria. So even uh, if a physician feels that something is serious, then yes, it is serious. You have no choice. Okay. So this is about the seriousness assessment. Uh, some adverse event may have multiple seriousness criteria that uh, something may be uh, life threatening as well as resulting in hospitalization. So something uh, you need to look into. Then the important step of the challenge rechallenge. So what is done here, or uh, I'll rather. Uh, explain with an example. Imagine this patient, uh, imagine a patient took this medicine, okay, and uh, for acne, okay, and uh, after taking the medicine, the patient developed discoloration of the teeth. Now, because there was discoloration, the physician requested or suggested to stop the medicine, and then the adverse event disappeared. Now, her teeth are white again. Right? Now, the patient uh, still continued to have acne, so the physician decided to restart the medicine. And after this, the patient again developed discoloration of the teeth. So what happened here? Patient was absolutely normal, took the medicine, developed discoloration of the teeth, stopped the medicine, the discoloration disappeared, so that is B-challenge positive. Now, the patient again took the medicine and again developed discoloration of the teeth. So, that is re-challenge positive. So, these are very important uh, parameters and uh, uh, they assist you in with the causality, right? So, if such things happen, then you would believe that uh, the adverse event may really be related to the uh, medicine. Then you need to write the narratives. As I told that narrative is a summary, right? So where uh, you would provide all the information uh, in the form of a sequential story, right? So you need to provide information about the nature, intensity and outcome of the adverse event. Then the clinical course. So it should follow a proper uh, chronology. Not that, okay, a patient is now fine. You start with patient was not fine, patient took the medicine, then had an adverse event, then the medicine was stopped, adverse event disappeared. So you should have a proper clinical course. Then you also need to provide an indication on the timing, right? The patient took the medicine and after two days had an adverse event. So that this kind of timing is very important. Then 
the relevant lab, lab measures. So what investigations happened, right? So if a patient took a medicine and had a rash, so was there any test performed, right? So that's something you need to provide. Then the action taken with the suspect drug, that uh, what really happened, was the medicine stopped? And after stopping, the adverse event disappeared. So wh why? This is because it you can get information about the de-challenge, right? So positive de-challenge means, yes, uh, the adverse event may be associated with the medicine. Then the treatment or intervention. So if the patient developed rash, what treatment was given? Was uh, the patient given uh, some anti-allergic medicine, right? So that you need to provide. Then... Uh, Autopsy findings or the post-mortem findings. If the patient dies after following the adverse event and if you have information about the autopsy report, then even that information has to be included in the narrative. And finally, the causality. Uh, if somebody reports an adverse event to the company, they may have their own causality assessment. That is, if a physician reports to the company, a physician would say that, okay, I feel that this is related to the medicine. And after that, the company or the physician, company safety physician also undertakes the causality assessment. So that is again the uh, company causality. So all this information has to be summarized in the case narrative. Okay, so it is like a story and following a proper sequence. Then causality assessment. As I told you, causality assessment is all about ascertaining the relationship between the medicine and the adverse event. So these are the methods used for determining the causal association or relationship between the drug exposure and the adverse drug reaction. So in case of causality assessment, uh, you need to check whether the medicine was started and after that an adverse event developed, right? So uh, what tools can be used for causality assessment? These include the Naranjo algorithm and the WHO causality assessment. Most commonly used is WHO causality assessment and there are many more causality tools but then I won't uh, discuss about those but the most commonly used is the WHO causality assessment. Now let's talk about the submission of case reports to the regulatory agencies. Now if you have a case report which has been logged into a safety database, okay, so you received an adverse event, you uh, again in the form of an adverse event report or a form and uh, you entered the entire case report into the safety database then the case report uh, underwent uh, say quality review medical review and now the case is ready for submissions so there is a concept where uh, an xml file may be generated from the safety database so XML file would have all the information about the case report and uh, again it is seamless that you click a button, you generate an XML file and this XML file will be submitted through the gateway, electronic gateway to the regulatory agency. So it can be as seamless as this or else you may need to do something manually where uh, you have an adverse event report and you manually enter it into the safety database of the regulatory agency, you can do that. Else, you may need to manually download the XML file and then again manually upload that into the safety database of the regulatory agency. You may need to do that. Once you do this, you need to have the proof, right, that you have submitted. So that is where uh, uh, you would get the acknowledgements. Now let's talk about the AS2 submissions where you have a case report and uh, you submitted that into the uh, or you process that in the safety data database. Then uh, you click the button, an XML file was generated. Then uh, it went through the gateway and got submitted or logged into the uh, database of the regulatory agency. Now once this is done, you need the acknowledgement where the acknowledgement is sent out from the database of the regulatory agency and again the acknowledgement is in the form of an XML and uh, finally the XML gets logged or lodged into your safety database. Now you have all the information, you have uh, the dates as well. 
So what is AS2? AS2 is about the automated ESG or the electronic submissions gateway where it can be as seamless as cutting, uh, as uh, pressing a button and the adverse event being submitted to the regulatory agency. And you also get the evidence or the proof which is in the form of an acknowledgement file. Okay, so this is the way AS2 submissions work. Apart from this, you also have manual ways to submit the case report. So, what are the different safety databases, right? So, uh, when you talk about safety database, that is the place where you log in or you process the adverse event, uh, where you also classify that and also you undertake the quality review, medical review and so on. Uh, some companies cannot afford to invest on a safety database. If the volumes are low, they can consider using Microsoft Excel or uh, even the Microsoft Access database. And if they can invest, then uh, they can use various uh, safety databases available in the market. Uh, I would like to give you some information about the safety database. The most commonly used is Oracle Argus. Then you have Addis Global, then uh, Safety Easy, then uh, Cleanable Safety, PV Edge, then you also have VigiFlow. So VigiFlow or VigiBase. VigiBase is the WHO UMC, that is the World Health Organization's uh, safety database, VigiBase. And uh, you also have something called as VigiFlow, where individual countries can use this tool and report adverse events directly into VigiBase, which is a WHO database. So WHO maintains a global repository of adverse events. So uh, this is uh, something very useful for reporting adverse events. Okay? So these are the various commonly used safety databases. Now let me explain about the workflow of uh, adverse events in the safety database, where uh, the first step is case registration or booking or triage uh, that is as I told you about the four minimum criteria and day zero. So once you do this, you would then push the case to data entry. Once the data is entered into the safety database, it would then be pushed to quality review. So quality review is where somebody would evaluate whether the things have been done properly, whether the medical coding is per uh, perfect, uh, that is MEDRA and WHODD and also the narrative is written properly, the day zero has been captured properly and so on. So once this is done, the case is pushed to medical review. So here a physician will look at the medical sense of the case report and also undertake the causality. And uh, the physician may also upgrade a case where it is non-serious, he or she makes it as serious or can even downgrade the case report that something has been considered serious the physician can downgrade that to non-serious. Once this is done, uh, in some companies you also have a QPP review workflow. And uh, this is not mandatory, but then yes, uh, in some companies you would have an additional filter, somebody who would look into the case report. And once everything is good, uh, the case will be routed for submissions. So as I told you, submissions is where you can submit the case report uh, seamlessly to the database of the regulatory agency by clicking a button. Uh, sometimes submissions can happen even to the uh, business partner. So that's something you should remember. Once submission is done, then you push the case to wrap up, right? Or you archive the case report. Sometimes uh, once you have done all this, you would get follow-up information where you get additional information or rather the outcome of the case report in case of pregnancy, you got the outcome of pregnancy after nine months. So that's something, uh, the additional information you got. So again, uh, once you got the follow-up information, you reset the clock and again the 15-day or the 7-day timelines begin. And uh, you go through the same rigmarole, the same set of uh, processes and finally again you submit the case report. And uh, in the end, you close the case. So that is case closure. So who are the users? Of, for, I, I'm talking in terms of the safety database, right? So which all departments would use the safety database? 
first of all you need an admin right the administrative or the it person who takes care of this safety database so this person will configure users and uh, if you want to make some changes or if there are any issues with the case reports in the database this person would help you then you have the safety department personnel the people who are involved in booking or the triage data entry quality review a uh, medical review for a times even the uh, qpp review and even submissions then you would also have people who are involved in quality right so a quality department may independently review whether you have done or whether you are doing the work properly or not so they may take a random sample and check whether the activities are being done properly then uh, you may even have the it team a separate it team which may uh, take care of the safety database they are the owners of uh, the safety database from the it point of view then uh, you may even have affiliates or affiliate users um, i give you the example of qppv the qppv may be based out of some other country and they may even look into the case report just to check whether everything is good so they get a the feel that yes everything is going on good right and additional pair of eyes to look into the safety database or look into the case report and finally you may have service providers so this is where a company may decide to outsource pharmacovigilance where you would have a service providers uh, who may support by processing the case reports in the safety database so all in all these are the various users uh, who would handle the uh, safety database right so uh, what did we learn today we learned about the case processing life cycle we learned about uh, the initial book in or triage then we learned about data entry quality review medical review and finally the submissions we learned more about submissions where we learned about uh, the seamless submissions by clicking a button and then the case report getting submission uh, submitted to the regulatory agency right so we learned about that as well and then we also learned about the various users uh, who would be using the safety database and yes we also looked into the various commonly used safety database right i trust you found this uh, to be useful if you have any questions feel free to reach out okay all the best and stay safe thank you